Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Adubato. We kick off this uh, program today with State Senator Joseph Lagana, a Democrat uh, who is the vice chair of the Senate Labor Committee. Good to see you, Senator. Good to see you, Steve. Tell everyone where you represent. I represent District 38, which is all in Bergen County, um, basically the, the, the middle part of the county. From I live in Paramus, so Paramus out east, out west, and down south. Great. And, and some of your top priorities, it, you have three children, three daughters, in fact? Three girls, yep. Three girls. Is that the reason why school safety has been such, well, not the only reason, obviously, but that's a big part of the reason why school safety is a top priority for you, right? Yeah, it is. It's a it's a huge priority of mine uh, for a multitude of reasons. First of all, what what's happened in this country over the past uh, twenty years uh, with uh, with uh, with school shoot shootings, you know, we should all be worried. I said this at uh, one of our committee hearings. It's not a matter of, of uh, if this happens again; it's a matter of when this happens again. And I think that we would be fools to think uh, that this just uh, is something that's going to go away magically. We need to secure our schools. We need to secure them properly. Uh, and we need to make sure that uh, our students, uh, because of, uh, I mean, listen, there, there's a lot of things going on with schools right now. I mean, school, school security, mental health is a big deal, which I know is another one of my priorities. Um, Talk about that, Senator. So, you know, outside of making school, sure, schools are safe, uh, we need to make sure that students are given the appropriate tools, uh, and as well as educators, to ensure that they recognize uh, children who are suffering from anxiety and depression, because it's happening. It's happening largely uh, in our uh, in our high schools, middle schools, even grammar schools. So I have three kids, right? My do my oldest daughter is almost 14. My middle one's 11. My little one's five. So I'm getting an eighth grader, sixth grader, and a preschooler. So I see it every which way, and I will tell you that there are very the various levels of of anxiety and depression. But I'm seeing it, and it's real. And I'm hearing from teachers, uh, and uh, you know they just don't have the support that they need currently. And I think we need, as a state, we need to make sure we do more. That's why I've introduced several pieces of legislation to help address this. To be really clear, what is the most significant thing that state government should be doing in this regard, in your view? Well, I think funding is, is key. So I think that the state, you know, when we talk about funding that goes directly to schools, that we should incorporate into that funding uh, money for, uh, for social workers uh, so that if a parent for instance, is recognizing that their child is uh, maybe having some difficulties and the teacher recognizes it too. Okay, we, how do we get this kid evaluated, right? Is it anxiety, is it depression, is it something else? It's extremely difficult right now for a parent to even find anybody. If you wanna find a psych psychiatrist for your child, you have to wait months. And if you're dealing with a child who's you know, having panic attacks, is incoherent, uh, really, really having a difficult time, in many cases is that severe, to wait three months is just not, is not acceptable. So I think funding to the schools, I think working, having a private, uh, a public private partnership uh, is, uh, is very appropriate. That, that happens in Bergen County. There's a public private partnership with a place called uh, Care Plus that does an amazing Care job. Plus. Care Plus, yep. Uh, they have a social worker embedded in many of the schools, uh, which has is, which is worked incredibly. And maybe, maybe, you know, maybe we talk about a pilot program to start introducing in some other counties that has a similar type model. Uh, but it gives a parent and, and educators a really a place to go to get this ch child evaluated and to help them get through whatever problem they're getting through. Suicide rates right now among, among teenagers is astronomical, and we're seeing children as young as 10 years old commit suicide. We need to do something and do, do it now. Senator, if you could on this, we've been doing a lot of programming around affordability in New Jersey, property taxes being a major part of that. The anchor property tax program that the governor, Governor Murphy, um, uh, advocated that many of you, your, you and your colleagues, you and your colleagues, many of whom voted for this. The most significant aspect of the anchor property tax program that makes a real difference for property tax owners and renters is, please. Well, it's it's the it's the direct to give back to uh, to uh, uh, property taxpayers. I mean, it's you know the fifteen hundred dollars off the off the top uh, the the direct check that we went to. Uh, a, a major, a major amount of households, I think, uh, had a really, um, a real and uh, impactful, um, uh, you know, was a real and impactful event for many people who were paying property taxes. Now, is it a long-term fix? No, of course, it's not a long-term fix. I think when we look long-term, which we need to do more, we need to look at the root of why property taxes are so high, and we need to look at the programs that we're funding to ensure that we're, the money's going to the right place, right? When we talk about the senior freeze, the senior freeze is an incredible, incredible program that's been around for a long time. I try to speak at senior centers multiple times a year 
and let seniors know about the program. And I can tell you nine times out of 10, there's half the room doesn't even know the program exists. The senior freeze program run by which department of state government? Uh, I believe that is Treasury runs a senior freeze. Uh, and what and is it? A freeze on what? So basically, you make an application. If you meet the uh, the income requirements, which most pe people above sixty five, many many seniors meet the income requirement, which we raised. I believe it's a, it's either a, it's over a hundred thousand dollars a year for uh, uh, per, okay. per individual. And what's so, frozen is your property. What's frozen? Your property taxes. So when you're when you are accepted into the program, let's say your property taxes are let's say the seven thousand dollars. If your town, uh, school board, county increases property taxes, yours stay flat. And the town, the, the town is reimbursed by the state, essentially. Um, so that, 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 that's a big deal, that program. A lot of people just don't know about it. Uh, Senator Joseph Lagana, I want to thank you so much for joining us, Joe. Is the, uh, Senator um, Lagana is actually the vice chair of the Senate Labor Committee. He has other responsibilities as well. Senator, all the best to you and your family. Thanks for joining us. Steve, thank you very much. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was two. It's hard to grow up with CF. But I have an awesome care team at Gory Up Children's Hospital, helping me do the things I want to do, like play lacrosse. And now I've been recruited to play in college. Where you go for pediatric care matters. Atlantic Health System, because every moment is a moment that matters. Also brought to you by PSC, where your story is our business. The Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care. Atlantic Health System, building healthier communities. The New Jersey Education Association. New Jersey's Clean Energy Program, lighting the way to a clean energy future. psc and committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. New Jersey Institute of Technology, NJIT, makes industry-ready professionals in all STEM fields. Johnson & Johnson, and by NJM Insurance Group, serving New Jersey's drivers, homeowners, and business owners for more than 100 years.